Uh, hi everyone, uh, my name is Sam Gregory and I work in the ana analytics team at Fauna and Flora International. Uh, I'm going to be talking today about a project FFI has recently been involved with in Liberia and Guinea. Uh, we thought since this was an Esri webinar we could try using the story map to walk through, uh, walk through what the project's all about. So the project was run as part of the West Africa Biodiversity and Climate Change Programme and focused on investigating wildlife connectivity through the platform of GIS and remote sensing. Um, the, the aim was to provide a usable tool alongside a report that provides recommendations for areas of conservation action. Uh, these recommendations were set out to consolidate and strengthen connectivity in the Zayama Wanagizi Wallagizi landscape. So, um, for those who aren't familiar with Fauna and Flora International, we're the world's oldest international conservation organization. Founded in 1903, FFI has been shaping and influencing conservation practice for almost 120 years. And our mission, as you can see on the slide, is to conserve threatened species and ecosystems worldwide. Uh, currently, FFI are working in over 40 countries across the globe in partnership with communities and grassroots organizations, keeping conservation in local hands. So, um, the Ziyama Wanagizi Wallagizi transboundary landscape is situated across the border of northwest Liberia and southern Guinea. The landscape is comprised of three protected or proposed protected areas. Um, the landscape spans approximately 10,000 square kilometers and forms an integral part of a mosaic of protected areas that run from southern Guinea through Liberia to the border of Sierra Leone. These protected areas all fall in the Western Ghanaian lowland forest eco-region, as Adrian mentioned earlier. These are the most westerly rainforests in Africa and an international biodiversity hotspot. The first of the three protected areas is the Massif du Ziyama, a man and biosphere reserve on the Ghanaian border with Liberia. The next is the Wanagizi proposed protected area on the Liberian border with Guinea, and finally, the Wallagizi proposed protected area. Each protected area is vitally important for its biodiverse forest, supporting high numbers of threatened species, including several critically endangered or endangered species. Some iconic and threatened species found in the landscape include the Western chimpanzee, forest elephants, and pygmy hippos, as Adrian mentioned earlier. And others include the white-bellied pangolin, the Upper Guinea Red Colobus Monkey, and the Western Gecko. And that's just to mention a few. However, development in the landscape threatens to destroy and degrade forests and subsequently seriously endanger the future of the ecosystems and species found in the landscape. The biggest immediate threat in the landscape is unsustainable agriculture. Traditional slash and burn methods to clear land for agriculture are expanding rapidly and they're encroaching into forests. Nearly all forest in the landscape has been affected in some way by human influence. The discovery of high-grade gold and iron ore deposits within the assessment area has resulted in a rapid increase in mining projects, with several extraction licenses being awarded. Mining is a locally destructive practice and can cause significant habitat destruction and degradation through indirect impacts across the wider landscape. Um, the global demand for hardwoods continues to spur logging in most of the forests in this region. The primary impact of logging is obviously the removal and degradation associated with the extraction of timber. The secondary impacts of this activity are frequently more damaging um, to the forest than timber harvesting itself, since the roads used to access the timber invite further agricultural encroachment and easier access to forests. So now I'm going to cover some of the GIS and remote sensing analyses that we did for the project. One really important part of this assessment was getting a reliable understanding of the land cover. In this case, for the years 2019, 2013 and 2000. This was to give us an insight into how land cover has changed over time and allow us to get a recent view for quanti quantifying the situation in the landscape. To support this, it was really important to collect ground truthing data throughout Zoyama, Wanagizi, and Wallagizi. Nearly 300 points were collected throughout the landscape, now displayed on the screen, and this was for two reasons. Reason number one was to train the classification model using real on the ground data, 
and two, to compare the results of the classification with a set of absolute values to see how accurately, accurately it performed. The data was collected by teams from FFI, our in-country partners, and local forest community members. In this animation, we can see the change in forests throughout the years. Um, this is in the north of the Wanagizi proposed protected area. We can see in 2000, the landscape is completely dominated by forest. As we leap forward to 2013, it's evident that much of the forest has been cleared surrounding Wanagizi and also carving a corridor between the northern and, northern and southern sections. At the beginning of 2019, we can see that forest loss trend continues and the northern section is getting increasingly isolated. And here are those changes looking at the classified data at a landscape scale. It's evident how large areas of forest outside the protected areas have been lost since the turn of the century. A mosaic of agriculture, shrubland and secondary forest now surrounds the Arma, Wanagizi and Wallagizi, with it increasingly encroaching further into the protected area boundaries. The most recent classification provided data for further analyses. Um, these classifications were made using ArcGIS Pro and NV software. This project provided a really good opportunity for FFI to transition from traditional ArcGIS desktop to the new ArcGIS Pro platform. One of the analyses completed for this project forecasted the risk of loss for remaining forest in the landscape using ArcGIS Pro. The aim of the risk-based model was to, to gain an understanding of how exposed forest is to removal or degradation, and subsequently to help target conservation interventions. The model assumes forest is at greater risk where levels of accessibility, suitability for cultivation, and extractable value are higher. In this case, any protection status was excluded to give a worst case scenario. Five proxy variables were used to calculate the risk of forest loss. These were the proximity to roads, the type of forest, proximity to settlements, proximity to historic deforestation occurrences, and the slope of the terrain. Another analysis looked at structural connectivity of forests in the landscape. From this connectivity analysis, we can start to see areas in the landscape where connectivity is strong or, in, or alternatively, the connectivity is limited. We identified areas where connectivity was particularly under strain. These are called bottlenecks. A bottleneck is effectively a small area that if lost or compromised could disproportionately compromise connectivity between core areas of forest. This gave us the ability to investigate areas in the landscape where connectivity is at risk. Here we can see bottlenecks forming in the Ziyama Reserve, displayed in red. These are formed surrounding the settlements of Bo and Banyama. We can see connectivity is funneled through narrow channels of forest, where settlements in and around the protected area have reduced forest cover, in this case, through agriculture. The analysis revealed that connectivity between the proposed protected areas of Wanagizi and Wallagizi is hanging on by a thread. Any remaining structural connectivity was severely fragmented, meaning the proposed protected areas are at serious risk of becoming completely separated. Reviewing all these analyses led to the creation of 23 specific recommendation zones throughout the landscape. Zones were chosen as locations to consolidate and focus conservation efforts and to provide more tailored recommendations at a local level. These came with suggested implementation measures that followed best practice. Uh, recommendations were based around avoidance, minimization, restoration, and monitoring measures. For example, this zone focused on reducing encroachment into the narrow corridor of forest that connects large core forest areas in Zayama. Efforts should be focused on consol consolidating agricultural practices within the surrounding settlements while suggesting restoration of forest areas that have been lost. Here it was suggested that efforts focused on protection and restoration of forest fragments between the proposed protected areas, trying to bridge the gap between Wallagizi and Wanagizi. These recommendation zones and the layers used to identify them represent really useful decision support tools for local conservation efforts. The spatial outputs help provide rationale for conservation interventions and where they are most needed to help protect the ZWW landscape. One of the things we wanted to do was to make sure this landscape level assessment was more than just a report. We wanted content to be accessible and interactive for all audiences, from non-GIS users to GIS professionals, and Esri tools are helping us do that. 
As well as sharing the data outputs of the project, we have built a sim simple web app for users to explore the data, as you can see on the screen now. We were also able to communicate the work in different ways. As well as the report, we're planning to launch a story map in a couple of weeks to help connect with a broader audience. The use of these sort of tools, story maps, web apps, and the sharing capabilities of ArcGIS Pro is really, really important to a project like this, as the more we can help people making the decisions to access and understand the data and to interact with it, the easier it is to have a real conservation impact on the ground. As our work in the landscape develops in the future, we hope to incorporate more streamlined data collection tools and processes in our practical work. FFI's successfully used app apps such as Survey123 and other projects, and we hope to continue to use this to best, best effect where possible. We've also deployed camera traps across the landscape, and we'll be looking to draw together the analysis from this assessment with the data produced in the camera trapping project. It's really interesting to see how the RSP, RSPB sorry, are currently working on similar data sets, and we've already reached out for their advice. So big thanks to Adrian and the team. And last but not least, during this project, around 50 members of staff from our team and partners across the landscape were upskilled in the use of ArcGIS Pro. I delivered some bespoke training in Monrovia with the help of Esri's online training materials. Our access to the Esri nonprofit program helped us greatly with achieving this, and we couldn't function without it. Um, we hope in the future to further increase capacity and use of GIS within projects across FFI. So, thank you for listening. Um, thank you to Esri for the tools and support that have enabled this work. Um, thanks most importantly to the many FFI colleagues in Liberia and Guinea, the Forestry Development Authority in Liberia and CFZ in Guinea, who have all contributed to pull together this piece of work. And last but not least, a big thanks to Andy Cameron and Hattie Branson in the FFI analytics team uh, for being fantastic.